the Great Kanto Desert. During the day, the temperature soar above 120 degrees in the shade. At night, it takes a nosedive well below freezing. These ruins are from a forgotten civilization, one that fell under the weight of its own thoughtlessness and greed several hundred years ago. No, 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 no. That's not what you're here for. You're here for the tits. Tatas. Stonking great milk jugs. Supersize me. So after a double dose of lovey-dovey, I thought it was time to watch a man's show, get those man points back up. And what better way to do that than with this, the borderline hentai extremely edgy fun bag fest known as Desert Punk. Here in this show, we follow the exploits of badass mercenary extraordinaire Tsunanobu, also known as... a Desert Punk. I have a reputation as a man that will complete any job given to me. It's not a reputation I intend to lose, I work too hard for it. So why don't one of you three slobbering nimrods tell me? Where the hell is that damn hideout of yours, huh? I ain't gonna say it again, fess up! I command answers, I'm gonna keep beating you until you tell me! Answer me, where is it? To explain what this show is, let me make a comparison. Desert Punk is like Trigun. Yep, 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 wait, wait for it, wait for it. Trigon has deserts, it has gunfights, and overall it's a show that takes itself really seriously but has tons of funny gags and hilarious nicks mixed in to make it a really good show. Now, take that last bit, reverse it, and up the perversion level to over 9,000 at least, and that is Desert Punk. It is so chock full of old man jokes. And by old man, I mean the really perverted kind. It's like if they took 100% perverted chobits and injected it into the show and then just increased everyone's breast size with this like little thingy that you have on those RPGs nowadays, the little slider. And I'm rambling. Anyway, uh, let me try and describe the show for you. The show takes place in a post-apocalyptic wasteland known as the Kanto Desert, where there exists a story about an elite mercenary whose abilities surpass all of his peers with his feats of skill and daring while on the job. He holds a reputation for always completing every job he has ever taken on. He is the Desert Punk. There's only one small problem. During the course of episode one, he screws up. And his whole reputation goes down the tube after one of his jobs is stolen from him by his milk jug rival, Junko. And then his life starts to take a downturn, and he screws up again, and again, and again. And it's all for comic relief, of course, but that is really the whole show. And it's hilarious. The uniqueness and charm of Desert Punk is its no-holds-barred style of perverted comedy. And by no-holds-barred, I really mean no-freaking-holes-barred. <laughs> It can be lewd, rude, and as I said before, as close to borderline hentai as you can get without going over, and it comes inches, no, millimeters away from crossing that line. Twice. But that's why the show's great. Like, it is hard to find a show so pervertedly awesome. Like, guys, all you need to do is you just need to grab a tissue box and... Oi, hey, why'd you turn on the split screen? You were about to make a masturbation joke. Well, yeah, it makes sense. You have a girlfriend, you know that, right? Oh, no, 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 no. That is where you are wrong, my dear Tristan. You are the one with the girlfriend. I am just an imaginary personification of your reviewer self, and therefore am happily single and can have all the 2D tail that I want. You're a sick bastard. Takes one to know one. Now, go run along and ball over Fruits Basket or something, you pansy. Fucking asshole. Bitch. Now. There's not much else to touch on really with the plot, as most episodes follow a job of the week format. Get the job done, collect the money, repeat, assuming he even finishes the job. Uh, but after episode 7, he gains his psychic apprentice Kitsuna, who for some reason idolizes this guy, despite how perverted he is. And she decides to uh, follow him around like a dog on a car tire, because she wants to become the desert's biggest power babe, and she thinks that following him around and becoming his apprentice will help her do that. Yeah. Don't know what she's thinking. 
Also, for the last several episodes, the entire tone of the series does a 180. It almost forgets its entire perverted and edgy nature and really goes serious. But it's kind of jarring, actually, after you were watching the series for so long and then it just happens. And it also doesn't help that the second opening theme that goes along with each one of these episodes starts off like this. I will Speaking of the opening, on their own, they don't seem to gather much merit by the songs alone, but by other things. The first opening, for example, is shot completely in live action, and it seems to follow the daily life of desert punk. And live action is a rarity in openings and endings, unless you're watching, like, Lucky Star or something. Though I will say that whoever they got playing Kanta doesn't seem to have Kanta's, um, short stature. And as I said, the second opening doesn't really make sense with that half of the series, because it's like, tits, 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 and then serious show. It's kind of jarring, actually. That's why they invented skip buttons, dear children. That is exactly what you should do. Or the, what I did. Anyway, next. The music itself, though, is interesting, because the majority of it is either orchestrations or jazz for the two aspects of the show, respectively. You got orchestrations for the action, and you have jazz to make softcore poor music for practically everything else. The animation is fairly good, actually. Gonzo helmed this one, and they decided to actually throw money into it, unlike other shows that they have animated, see previous reviews. And Desert Punk definitely shows some of their best work. Now, why they decided to make a comedy that is completely nonsensical and more or less not serious at all, besides the last couple of episodes, I don't know. But hey, I'm not going to complain. Whatever ups the entertainment value is fine by me. I can't really compare the two dubs for this one because I've only ever watched it in English, and of course that's going to be my recommendation. Uh, that doesn't mean that the sub is bad at all. It's just, here's my usual train of thought. If the dub is really good and I enjoy it, I have no need to watch the sub. That's how I do it. Like, Eric Vale did a brilliant job with Kanta. Uh, Lucy Christian, no surprise. Great Kitsuna. And I'm even including the, the supporting characters, like Stephanie Young for Junko and the hilarious Kenny Green as Rain Spider, who wins the most awesome line award for saying... There's a party in my pants and everyone's coming! So yeah, the dub was awesome. Next. Finally, to wrap this whole thing up, if you have a very astute gutter mind, like I do, you're going to find this show freaking hilarious. If not, you will probably think it's one of the most disgusting things you have ever seen. So that's up to you. Uh, Funimation is the one distributing this one, and it is a Viridian Collection. Now, I've bashed Viridian Collections quite a bit over the past couple of weeks, but this one has held up surprisingly well, despite the fact this is the oldest Viridian Collection that I own. It also is chock full of extras, which are awesome. And normally Viridian Collections have only bare-bones anime content, so it's a real treat. Like, what's on here? Uh, the original Japanese extras from the Japanese DVDs are all on here with subtitles, and that's pretty good. You have commentary, commentary, from the English staff, as well as the auditions for the dub, and that's great. Um, there's also on the final desk, there's this one track, or not track, it's one clip that's like punk-isms, is what they call it. And they just go through the entire show and show all of the weird slang that they use in the dub. And it's like... And... The, oh, and finally, finally, finally. They have the as-seen-on-TV mode for several of the episodes. And what this is, is you've seen the nature of this show. No television station in their right mind would broadcast this thing unedited. So Funimation decided to put several episodes on the DVD in the edited form. Now, why would you want to watch this, you ask? Now, it, they're not as good as the original episodes give or take, but what they did do is they added a whole bunch of really funny stuff in replace of everything that, that they had to cut, and I don't know, I found it interesting. Maybe you will too. So that was Desert Punk, and it was great. I should review manly shows more often. In fact, what do I got on my shelf? Okay, let's see what I got in this pile here. Ooh, you. Ooh, Samurai 7. Samurai 7, I haven't even opened this one yet. Ooh. Can't go more manly than a samurai. I could do some unlicensed stuff too, like I could do Fist of the North Star. Like, you are shock! Da -na 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 -na, I don't know the rest of the song in Japanese. You are shock! Midori Days. Someday. Razafon. The answer to Evangelion. 
Mindfuck Central. Hey, I haven't had a Mindfuck since Lane. That might be good. Oh my god. This is perfect. Princess Tutu. Wait, what? Start with one circle, add one more circle, then add one more big circle, then a raincoat blowing in the wind, well don't forget about the sunshade now. Risking your life is what you do, what you do. It's what you do. 